A very good morning. We are very honoured to welcome Ms. Chang Lai Fang, Permanent Secretary of Education, Ministry of Education and Chairperson, NIE Councillor, as our guest of honour today. <laughs> Mrs. Chua Yan Ching, Deputy Director General of Education, Professional Development and Executive Director, Academy of Singapore Teachers, Ministry of Education, members of the NIE Council, distinguished guests, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. At this Teachers' Investiture this morning, we have the privilege of presenting 466 beginning teachers from the Postgraduate Diploma in Education Primary, Postgraduate Diploma in Education, Fiscal Education, and Diploma in Education programs. This ceremony is about each and every one of you entering officially into the Singapore's teaching profession, a profession that we all are very proud of. I wish to offer my heartiest congratulations to all our graduates. Today, we are gathered here to celebrate your success and your choice of this noble profession. Colleagues and friends, please join me in a round of applause to celebrate our newest members of the teaching fraternity. In my previous TIC speeches, I spoke about the care of the teacher, the courage of the teacher, the character of the teacher. And this morning, I'd like to share with you about the creativity of the teacher. In today's highly complex and challenging environment, with changing demographics and fast-changing environment, actually the teacher's job is one that, is to, that demands a lot of creativity. When I started teaching, I realized that actually teaching is a very creative job because all the time you got to think of creative ideas and generate ways to either interest your students or to manage students who have different needs. When you have students who are enthusiastic, all the more you got to think of ways to keep the excitement going when you teach a topic. So it is not just the curriculum per se, but you've got to find ways and means. For example, if you are teaching a topic on center of gravity, I remember, you know, I had to collect all kinds of artifacts to try to illustrate to them, you know, the wonders of gravity. So I believe every time you teach a new topic, sometimes even the same topic, but with different groups, you've got to find ways and means to generate ideas, collect artifacts, to really excite the students. And sometimes, as you teach different classes, you will find that the students have different needs. Some are a little slower, some are a little faster. And in order to help the students who have greater needs in terms of the pace of learning and things like that, you really have to understand them and you've got to always think of, hey, how do I get these students to be with me? So all this calls for you to be generative all the time. A deep passion to teach and to more young minds have led you into this profession. But to successfully win the students' hearts and minds, you really need to show that you care through all of this innovation and customization. This year, actually, we had the Caring Teachers Award. And, uh, I was very, very, very uh, uh, touched, in fact, and impressed by the fact that we had over a thousand uh, nominations covering more than 234 schools. And these nominations came from students and parents. Now, this is heartening because it shows that the society truly still appreciates teachers very much. And if you ask the students, you'll find that the key word that re repeatedly surfaced is that teachers, the, te the good teachers care for them. A caring teacher is one who will go beyond the core of duty and have the well-being of the student foremost in their mind. 
A creative teacher knows that the best learning experience don't just come from a ready lesson plan or resource package. All the more, you would have to research. All the more, you've got to confide with colleagues. How best to help the learners? Many of you will be teaching in the uh, uh, primary schools in this particular batch. And you find that in the primary age, it's a time where the life of the child is so pristine. There's a proverb which says that a child's life is like a parchment where every teacher lays an indelible mark. And you find that to you, you may have a class of 40 students, but to that one student, you are that one teacher. Everything that you say affects the emotions of the child. The way you affirm them, the way you guide them. Now, if you creatively generate ideas and work with these students, I have to confess, even in my own teaching experience, you don't always succeed. Sometimes you do, you work so hard to work on a particular uh, pedagogical uh, innovation. It didn't work, right? Never mind. Try it again. Sometimes you find ways and means to motivate the students to create classroom routines and ways to get the students with you. It didn't work, right? Well, it's okay. So one of the things that we need to learn as beginning teachers is to have a sense of grit and resilience. Try it again. Reflect on how is that so? In this book, Thinking Fast and Slow, psychologist and Nobel Prize winner Daniel Kahneman explains that in our thinking system, there's what we call a fast system and a slow system. The fast system is primarily intuitive and emotional, but the slow system is deliberate, is logical, is organized. I always marvel at the principal master teachers and the master's teachers, the way they teach. Now, when you look at these expert teachers, so to speak, we tend to think that, hey, maybe they just have the intuition or they just, they just uh, have more flair for, of teaching than, than me. But the reality is, to become an expert teacher is a result of interaction, uh, iterations of lots of slow, deliberate thinking. So Daniel Kahneman tells us that to build this expert intuition, it comes from working through, constantly learning from the past experience, building a tacit memory system in both your mind and body to draw on this and therefore make decisions efficiently. So I would encourage you to have this mindset of working towards being the expert teacher reflecting on your own experience all the time and always looking to and talking to people who are really more expert. In the classroom, you always have what I would call the FIRE operating, F-I-R-E, because in the classroom, you've got to be fast, right? If the students are behaving quite differently from what you want, if a suddenly a, 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 question, a provocative question is raised, you can't wait, right? You've got to act, act fast. And you can act intuitively and in a very inspirational way. You got to respond and you got to feel, you got to act emotionally. That's the fire, right? But in order to have this fire going and this fire growing from strength to strength, you got to be able to reflect and take one step back. So that is why we always talk about the reflective practitioner. And it's a very real thing. So as you move into the classroom, as you experience, right? When you take a step back each time, you operate in the slower system, and then you think again, right? Logically, intentionally, in a very organized way, what I have done and how would I do it better? And if you go through these iterations, we'll move towards the building of our own expertise and become a more skillful teacher. Another psychologist, Chikzem Mihalia, who wrote this book, Flow, tells us that when you grow, the more you grow into the expertise, you know, you will flow. And when you're in the flow, you actually begin to enjoy the work. 
That's why if you ask expertise and you speak to teachers who are very passionate, it seems that they don't have the burnout. They just enjoy doing it, right? Because when you enter into this expert flow, somehow you function optimally. And that's what, what Chick Zen tells. And I want to encourage you that this is indeed the case. That is why when you talk to expert teachers or the, the teachers who are long in the system who are so passionate, you find that they always have this kind of joy in them. And I want to encourage you, as you move in this journey, you will experience the optimal flow. In NIE, you have experience from our faculty members, the various pedagogies, team-based learning, self-directed learning, flipped classroom, problem-based learning, right? Lots of various ideas. Now is the time where you need to be courageous to incorporate these ideas and attempt them in the classroom. So the creative teacher will continuously strive to better oneself, to impact and help the students learn best. Today's ceremony is a symbolic celebration of, a very important, of our very important profession. And on a daily basis, we as educators are faced with the challenge of also instilling the right sense of responsibility in our students and to guide them to grow in today's very complex uh, world. Our inculcation of our students as custodian of the societal values, of our national values, must be intentional. Somebody once told me that in the US, they have a building which is based on what they call postmodern philosophy. And for this building, if you enter into it, they will have staircase that leads you to nowhere and rooms that are totally dysfunctional, not, that's not functional, you know. Why? Because the design doesn't need planning. Anything goes. Now the question is, if you have a building like that, what about your foundation? Does anything goes for the foundation? We believe that in our education and the way we build our education in Singapore is that we have clear foundations and we need strong foundations. And the foundations of values and character is what that will build our future generation. So as a teacher, we must constantly ask ourselves, if I look at my students, the dispositions they are having, the kind of inclination, right, the speech, the way they behave, are they going to become responsible citizens in the adult world? It is our role as teachers, because they spend so much time with us to guide, to instill. So it is not just only the curriculum, but the dispositions, the character, the values that we all should be concerned with for each and every one of our students. So let me end with this quote by Dr. Ruth Wong, the founding director of the former Institute of Education. She said, teaching has a rejuvenating effect on the teacher. For the teacher is always associated with the young and in keeping with their outlook while accruing wisdom through the years. The future of our nation starts now with you as you shape it one student at a time. And I wish you all the very best in this journey. Thank you.